Welcome back to York Sports Network. You guys have just been watching a silent stream, and that's my bad. Didn't push the right buttons, and that's on me, and I do apologize. But so far, it's been a really nice game for the Dukes. They're going to be up 15 here with about 6 minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the second quarter. They've been really playing well. And Hinsdale South has had quite a few good shots and more good shots than I've seen against any other team that the Dukes have played so far. But they haven't been able to convert. Therefore, you're not going to score points. But Connor Choi, he's the man to my left tonight. What have you seen so far from both teams that have really factored into this now 16-point lead for the Dukes? I've seen York taking great care of the basketball in this game. Uh, Coach Dunn talked to him today as he's my criminology teacher. Great criminology <laughs> teacher, but besides, it's not really the point of this, but he said if they take care of the basketball in this one, that'll lead to better shots tonight. Speaking and of better shots, a nice corner three from Jack Wiegus, the sophomore guard. Anyways, as you were saying. Yeah, lead to better shots, and we've seen that so far. A.J. Levine shooting at a high percentage, something we're not really used to seeing so far this year. Scores a lot of points, but doesn't really, the percentages don't really match up, but he has been improving each game, and he's been putting the work in after the game, staying after, he stayed after for about 20 minutes after the Lockport victory to shoot around, and it's really starting to show with his play on the court. Definitely, he's been improving, and that's something that Coach Dunn, um, an a sentiment Coach Dunn echoed to me last time I talked to him when I was doing color announcer, when I was doing color announcer and he was telling me that this is a young team they have a lot of sophomores and there's a young team mistake leaving a wide open corner three especially to Ferrer who's been a great three point shooter throughout his Hinsdale South career it's Pecos drives with it and a good opportunity for Richardson but as I was saying they, they're they a young team a lot of juniors three ball attempt here good interesting rebound um, technique from Adam Hardick typically you want to catch it when it's that close to your hands but he tries to bat it out to Pecos Unable to corral it anyways. Hardick thinking he was playing volleyball there, but volleyball's not to the spring, coached by everyone's favorite government teacher, Mr. Dowdy. Unfortunately, Hardick, you are not on the starting volleyball team, and that's going to lead to a Duke's turn turnover, something where Coach Dunn has said they have averaged about 15 turnovers a game. He said that is completely unacceptable. They need to drop that by about five or six if they want to win more basketball games. Definitely, turnover battle is really the argument in every sport, football, basketball, not necessarily baseball, but in hockey too, you want to win the turnover battle, and the Dukes have been great at forcing turnovers, but not great at preventing them, and there's Danko with one right there. Driving here, losing the ball is number 14, coming off the bench, there's gonna be Anthony Lavar Lava Lavarado. A six foot forward senior. Sloppier basketball by both teams here. You've seen a couple of turnovers from both teams in about 30 seconds of the clock running. And this is what Coach Dunn was talking about. You gotta limit the turnovers, but they are doing a good job of forcing South's turnovers, which is why the score remains in favor of the Dukes by so much. Nice shot by Richardson, uses size on Lavarado. To get up and make the basket. Extends the lead to 15 now. Hensel South yet to get into double digits. Leading score, Ferreira, with that three ball we saw earlier. And another three ball. Open look, rebound, gonna go up with it. Number 20, no good. Hardick with the rebound. Number 20 was Chris Bolte. A lot of missed wide open looks here, and that just can't happen if you're South. You haven't even scored 10 points yet. The Dukes are crushing you in the first two quarters of play, so you've got to start hitting these wide open threes that the Dukes are pretty much just giving you. Nice little stop and go movement from Richardson, using deceleration to be able to float backwards and give himself an open shot as the defender went flying past. Him and Levine both have nine points. And Richardson stepping up offensively this game. He was one of the better offensive players. A forced turnover there, Levine with it. Nice little around the world, doesn't really work. Gonna call a travel here. As he set his pivot foot and then escaped it while he had possession of the ball. Not allowed to do that. 
Levine doesn't like the call. Talking to the referee over there, but. Sure, a very civil conversation. As the York Dukes have won multiple awards for their sportsmanship. Nice pass there inside to Lavarado and a great block from Tommy Van Daff who got in the game number 20, 22. Van Daff with one of the best blocks I've seen in a while. Only six feet tall, but he could really get up there. If any movie producers are looking for the next star and white boys can jump too. I think you found your guy. Definitely York Dukes representative. Corner three attempt from Danko, a little off the mark. Something the Dukes really need to work on is their three-point shooting. It's always tough, and as a three-point attempt here from the sophomore guard, Weegas, puts him up to six. But the Dukes got to stop those cross-court passes. I mean, you are just leaving players wide open. You are basically begging them to put points on the board, and South with a little bit of a slow start in terms of that, but they've started to pick it up there. Now they've cut the lead to 14. Still a long way to go, but the Dukes offense starting to fizzle out here late in the second quarter. South's offense is starting to pick up. So a little bit of a momentum shift in the last two minutes of play so far. Levine gonna inbound the ball. Levine's really come a long way as a passer so far this season. We've started to see some more high-level passes from him, but I'd say I want to see more consistency from that. There's a lot of turnovers, as you said when you talked to Coach Dunn, a lot of them coming from Levine, trying a lot of passes. Going in is Richardson, going to get the foul call. You're going to say shooting from behind. There, number five, that's going to be on the new man. That is Nathan Markopoulos. Also comes on is number 13, Elijah Fields. Simon Redford checking in for the Dukes. So and As we said, we talked about death before with this lineup, and so far with only 8 plus 6, 14 minutes played, they've already played 9 players consistent for quite a few minutes, and a hard hit there. Hensdale South not happy with it. An opportunity, foul called, going to be on... Number 23 of Hinsdale South is my assumption. But the Hinsdale South coaches are not too happy as Levine went up for the ball and so did Markalopoulos. <clears throat> and they collided. Markalopoulos hit the floor hard. Completely accidental there. I'm, there's no intent behind that at all. But obviously that's a scary fall from one of your players. And I think the coaches are just more expressing why would you not blow a whistle? Make sure he didn't hit his head the wrong way. Concussions, such a big worry from all over the athletic world today, especially in young kids. Nice little turnaround, gets to go. Shooter's roll, shooter's touch from Braden Richardson. One of the best first halves I've seen from Braden Richardson probably ever, already with 11 points, and it seems like nobody on this Hinsdale South team has an answer for him. Definitely, and that's why he's back in there without Hardick in the alignment, so he has the spacing inside to ta attack inside because that's where he's been getting the majority of his points. Sano with it, loses it. We're going to be off number 23. Angerly throws the ball. That's Matthew Rudolph. Kind of took the ball there and then just kind of tiptoed out of bounds. Maybe thought the ref wasn't looking, but he was staring <laughs> at his feet the whole time. Easy whistle for the ref to blow. And another turnover for Hinsdale South. Money, oh. Can't call, as a commentator, Connor Choi, you cannot call money when they don't make it. Mike Breen made millions of dollars off of saying bang, but when did he say it, Connor Choi? After the shot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, back to the point. That comes with more experience, and you'll get it over time. I believe in you, Connor Choi. Man with high potential right here. Driving in is the sophomore. No good, but the rebound by Rice, pushing the effort up to Redfern. Nice lay off the back of the glass. Redfern dusting the three Insdale South players right there. 
They could jump and try to block the shot all they want, but Redfern was just way too speedy for them, looking like a track star right there. And a strip from Rice, but going to go off his foot, so it's going to stay with South. It's attempting to steal the ball from Elijah Fields. Taking it out is Brendan Savage, the starting guard. 6-3. South on a bit of a scoring drought, looking for some points here. Interesting pass from Rudolph there, but it worked. But not the second pass where Levine's going to get it and oh, slow oh, it oh, down. Oh. <laughs> In transition, Levine bean tops. Hinsdale South's player. What a dunk there, an end game as well. Wow. Nearly made the buzzer beater, but wow. AJ Levine with some enforcement. On his head. AJ Levine. I didn't know he could jump that high. That is incredible. Levine only 6-1, but he can move and he can jump very high. Josh, what have you seen so far? from the Dukes that you like. I really like the scoring. So far on pace to put up 64 points. It's quite a lot of points and more than they've scored in over half of their games. So that's always good whenever that happens. But on the flip side, their defense has really been the most impressive. They give themselves a 20 point lead going into the halftime, really shutting out a not too horrible Hensdale South team. And they've done a great job on defense. Giving them opportunities, though, is going to be the thing that Coach Dunn is going to be angry about because whenever you're playing a team that has so far not been playing up to your caliber, you're going to want to focus on the opportunities you give them instead of the results that they get. And Connor Troy, how has Hensdale South been getting those opportunities and then wasting them? Well, it's really, like you said there, pretty much the full court passes. You have a guy wide open in the corner, and he has the opportunity to shoot. The Dukes have been fortunate enough where they're shooting like a solid 10% right there on these wide open opportunities. But well, if we turn to Stats Guy Nick, he could give us the exact answer. Stats Guy Nick, how has Hinsdale South been shooting from three? From three, not so good. Probably under 20% right now. I don't have the exact numbers for Hinsdale South, but it's pretty bad compared to ours. Stats guy Nick, not doing his job to the fullest potential, but we believe in him to get better. It's okay. Our numbers, he's focused on the Dukes, and that's what's best because the wise words of Gavin Connolly, go Dukes.
Hello and welcome back to York Sports Network. We are here, start of the second half, Hensdale South at York. York leads 32-12. Inbounding the ball is Ben Wiegas, the great sophomore guard who leads him in points with six so far. Nice pump fake there and a wonderful block from AJ Levine, able to recover in time to get back and get that ball. Nice defensive play from him. Levine has just been so majestical in this game so far, ending the half with the best dunk I've ever seen in a high school basketball game. Outside of maybe Braden Huff on Glenbard West last year, but Levine absolutely just so energetic and one of the best players on this York Dukes basketball team. Definitely, he's been the points per game leader so far. So he's been the leading in the leader in the scoring department. Little turnaround jumper from Wegas, no good. Richardson with it. Richardson shooting a perfect five for five in the first half. He had 10 steals as well, which is just ridiculous. Something Coach Dunn has to be very pleased with as there's AJ Levine bodies Wegas and gets the ball. I'm sorry, gets the bucket as York's gonna go up 12, 24. I'm sorry. Ferreria with it. Nice little lay-in there, was able to get up and around Adam Hardick. Duke shot 13 of 16. Nice pass to Hardick inside who makes the layup. Duke shot. What a, what a nice pass from Levine, able to split the double team. Duke shot 13. 16 on two point field goals in the first half looking to keep that high percentage shooting up in the second half Rudolph with a nice stop and pop able to get over Hardick for the bucket driving as Levine out to Picos Levine with it, nice pass Richardson inside, misses it Rudolph with the board three ball, no good not even good from hitting anything as he airballs it. Levine with it. Tapping his chest. My bad as Danko had an open layup. But hopefully get him here. Nice ball movement and off ball movement from the Dukes. Richardson, three ball. Good. A big Beautiful. man knocks it down from deep, and he's continuing his hot shooting, leading the team with 14 points, and Danko got hit in the face. He's all right, but it, unfortunately, not only hit in the face by an arm, but also the ball, as it goes out of bounds off him and Hinsdale Central ball. It's scratching his nose, probably has that weird feeling when you get just bopped in the face. Out there is number five, Markolopoulos, who takes the attempt, no good. Number 23, Matthew Rudolph. Number two, Wiegas. Number 30, Ferreria. Nice pass there from number 32, Chris Danko. And the final man on the floor is number 21, Brandon Savage. And that's all for Hinsdale South. Richardson overpowering his way, gets his own rebound. I'm gonna say off ball, on the ground foul, I wanna say, on Richardson. Yep, 35. Hinsdale Central ball. In South's last possession, uh, they had uh, Brendan Savage wide open, elected not to pass to him. Not really sure why. He had the wide open three point shot there. Well, maybe that missed mid ranger explains why his teammates decided, elected to not feed him the ball. Richardson with the ball, top of the key, gives to Levine. Levine, wicked pass to Chris Danko for three. No good. Richardson with the board, out to Levine. Step back three. Can he hit it? So close. Adam Hardick with another offensive rebound. The big man from deep. So close. Hardick with the rebound, puts it up, and he is fouled. Thank you, Connor Troy, for taking the reins. I was working with the scoreboard, but... 
Foul on Hardick. Not the greatest free throw shooter, but at the charity stripe, it's called the charity stripe for a reason, and you're looking for some free points. Good there. Setting the lead to 24 for the Dukes, putting up 40 points so far. Hardick reminds me of a Tony Snell type of player. Not the best shooter on the team. But Tony Snell? Tony Snell was drafted for his shooting. Tony Snell couldn't shoot in the NBA, but from the free throw line, you know, he hasn't missed in three years, and that's who Adam Hardick reminds me of. Jump ball, possession arrow in favor of the Dukes. Good job by Hardick. We're just going to gloss over that, let's say, interesting tidbit from Connor Choi. It's going to go now possession in the favor of Hinsdale South. Until it switches again, Picos with it to Richardson. Deep three, Levine. No good. Ferrio with the rebound. Pushing the pace is Wegas. Nice pass to Markelo. Butchered his name, but he didn't butcher the layup. Richardson Marco just Poulos. watched them lay it in there. Josh Melvin with the incredible pronunciation. Thank you, thank you. Could work as a spelling bee proctor one day with that type of pronunciation. We're gonna test it out at the Tosh. Be sure to join York Sports Network pretty much. Nice pass here for Richardson. Inside to Hardick, completely whiffs. Up again, misses again, tip in, miss again. And finally the rebound. Step padding those rebound numbers. But we guess with it, using a speed and one on Picos. Not sure what Picos was doing there. Gave him, maybe he wanted to give him a pat on the back, but he just smacked him. And that is a clear foul for the refs to make. That can't happen if you're Picos. And he'll go to the bench along with Adam Hardick, Mr. Offensive Rebound. We'll get a sip of water and then go sit on the bench. Maybe he'll remind himself that he is not a volleyball player and he should maybe finish a little bit better. Connor Choi fangs out tonight. Going for the dagger. Nice rebound from Logan Rice. Dukes with more of a shooting lineup here. Levine, Danko, Richardson, Rice, and Waltz. All of them can drain the three ball, except maybe Danko sometimes, but... Danko can get hot every once in a while. They call him the microwave. He can get hot fast. I'm sorry, no one calls him that. I just came up with it. Maybe it'll stick. Anyways, back to the action. Nice pass here. Waltz mishandles it. Nice pass inside to Rice, who no call for the foul on the contact, probably because it was accidental. Danko with it, out to Levine. Fakes the shot, drives, steps oh! back, breaks some ankles. Oh! Oh! oh my God, AJ Levine, are you kidding me? Yabba dabba do, AJ Levine, how do you do the best cross up of all time? And Cl the Dick Campbell gym loses their mind. And the crowd and Connor Choi loses his mind. But a steal from Kyle Waltz here. Push on the pace back to Levine. Crosses back towards the center. Nice jelly oh. reverse layup. Wow, he's really turning it on tonight. That is number 18, 17 and 18 points for him. He is going off tonight and he's doing efficient with it. Stats guy Nick. How efficiently is he shooting? He's three for four from the field here in the third quarter. Really turning it on, growing into the role. Seven for 12 on the night. Seven for 12 on the night. Thank you, Stats Guy Nick. Follow there, in comes Desano, Redfern, and Tommy Van Daff. No! I guess he needs some water to cool him down as that man is on fire right now, making those Instagram clips. South coach, thanking God that his prayers were answered as AJ Levine <laughs> comes out of the game. Red hot in this one. It was him and Richardson were neck and neck for the point lead, and he said bye bye Braden and <laughs> caught some heat. Marco Pulos with the three. A good rebound from Mitchell, blocked by Waltz. Slows the pace. And bring up the ball himself over to Redfern. Elijah Fields in for the sophomore Wegas, as well as number 20, that's Bolte. Chris Bolte off the bench for Rudolph. 
Inside is Dezano, gets knocked off him. Turnover. Savage with it, loses it, but back to Bolte. Ferreira near loses it. Over to Savage. And so South looking to penetrate with only 22 seconds left. Had a wide open Savage in the corner. Airballs it. And they're gonna need to push. They're up 16, Redfern with it. Floater, no good. And they're gonna push the pace five. And a nice little layup from Fields to cut the deficit to 14 as time expires. As Desano misses the entire backboard. Wow. In a good third quarter there, clearly you were excited for one player in particular. And what really happened to help the Dukes get energized? I mean, they kind of just found their rhythm. And then after that, the star-studded plays started to come. AJ Levine put that guy on the ground, absolutely dropping him, and hits the step back three. That really fired up the crowd, fired up his team, and got the momentum going. Already at 46 points going into the fourth quarter. And we'll be back. You're watching York Boys Varsity Basketball live on York Sports Network. We are back, Hinsel South with the ball. Quick pass from Ferreira inside to Fields. This time gets fouled on the block attempt. Fields, the senior guard, not necessarily the biggest guy on the court. Staying at a strong five foot 10. Short, but he's quick, very shifty around the court and you saw that there. Got past a bunch of Dukes and he got fouled so we'll get a trip to the stripe here. Misses the first free throw, but hopes to nail the second end. He's hoping to give some life to this south offense here. Now getting pressured. Off to Waltz. Van Daff back in the game. An entire bench lineup here with Rice, Dezano, Redfern. Nice little pocket pass attempt. But Rice picks it up off the ground while he's out of bounds. That's going to be Hinsdale South ball. But 11 players in use tonight for the Dukes. That's just, that's unheard of so far. Usually we don't really see that. Haven't seen it a lot so far in games this season. But we have tonight just... Every player has contributed something. Even if they haven't put up points on the scoreboard, they have been useful in some way. And that makes it really hard for Coach Dunn to say you can't, you're not really going to get in the game for the, for the rest of the game if you're just playing so well as a team collectively. That's just a great team performance so far. But that's going to be the hard decisions Coach Dunn is going to have to make as the season winds down but it honestly really works out well now as it's a long season high schoolers are stressed they're going to get tired these guys are smart out here and they're going to be doing some challenging classes that they're going to need to focus on as well outside of basketball and sometimes that's going to weigh on you van daff with it going up off the bottom of the rim pushing the pace nice pass over to bolte and gets stripped by redfern gets it back 
And just throws it out of bounds on accident there. But like, as I was saying, the the depth will actually help the Dukes in the long run, but we'll see how th the roster develops towards the end of the season and who's really going to be that eight, nine, seven, eight, nine man rotation. Waltz with it. Takes the three, no good. Nice rebound by Redfern, goes up with it, no good. Dezano with it, goes up off the front of the rim. Put a little more arc into it is what Dunn is probably saying. Ferrario with it. Going to try and go an up and under, kind of a crazy shot attempt, but doesn't work. Kind of hard to hit a shot at all if you have four Dukes on you, but he did his best. Here's Fields with it, and... A timeout for Coach Dunn as he looks at his players in disappointment as quite a few turnovers in a row. He is not happy, and as you said earlier, that is bad. Turnovers cannot happen. Unacceptable. And it's really just been weighing this team down, as Coach Dunn has said. But they've looked a lot better, but you cannot have the turnovers start acting up, especially in the fourth quarter. You have a big lead, but your lead is not that big. And we'll turn to Stats Guy Nick. Stats Guy Nick. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. He says he's doing great. Anyways, turnovers. Do you have turnovers? How many turnovers do the Dukes have? I have steals here. So S steals. We have 13 steals. York does. York does. But how about steals against? Do you have steals against? I believe it's two. I feel like it's a lot more than two. Guy Nick. A lot of turnovers for the Dukes. We'll need to get Stats Guy Nick on that one to help Coach Dunn show the actionable, tractionable steps for the Dukes to be able to lower the amount of turnovers. One there again turns into a bucket for Wegas, who comes back on. And here come the starters, Pico, Stenko, Hardick, Richardson, and Levine all going to come in here. Nothing but smiles to these guys. Richardson with a big grin. Yeah, he looks like a 30-year-old man, but he's a kid at heart, folks, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Do not mind. Connor Troy's coming. Anyways, foul. Foul 22, Tommy. Foul going to the line is going to be Anthony Lavarado. Trying to, they finally got the lead under 20, trying to make it 18 here, and he does. Out comes everyone for the Dukes, and in goes the starters. Out comes Bolte, and goes Rudolph for Hinsdale South. And they pretty much have their starters out there, except for Savage and Ferreria. Levine with it, over to Picos. Now they're gonna start some ball press, out to Danko. Wasn't able to get the shot off in time, over to Richardson. That's gonna be a good shot attempt. Throws it too hard off the back of the glass, but gets fouled nonetheless, so he's gonna have two shots here. Fouls on 23, Matthew Rudolph, his third. Second. Richardson looking to catch up to AJ Levine here, only four points behind him, he can cut his point deficit for the leader in points by half. If he hits these free throws. And the first one is nothing but net here for Richardson. Second shot on the way, it's up. And it's no good. Braden hits one of two. Oh! AJ Levine goes full Spider-Man, comes out of nowhere and smacks the ball out of bounds for a, a block from the junior. What a block. Oh my. From AJ Levine, showing off the athleticism, the skill, the touch, 
and the flair. All of it's on display for AJ Levine, who's looking to take the mantle from Drew Kircher, who is here tonight supporting the Dukes. Chris Danko with it gets fouled oh. and won. Nice little strut after that. Great play by Chris Danko. Nice move by the three sport athlete right there. Gets the basketball, sprints down the court, lays it in and draws the foul. So Danko with a chance for three points. I definitely want to say my apologies to the Pecos family if I've been pronouncing it wrong all evening. But as we all knew, Connor Troy was wrong in assessing my talent as a pronouncer. And that is not that good, but I do apologize to the Pecos family. Ryan Pecos out there doing great tonight. And all season, earn it, really earning a starting role anyways. Lavarado with it, down low to R Rudolph. Nice little pass out to number 12, a new face for Hinsdale South as he makes the turnaround jumper. That's gonna be Matthew Pexulis. Not a new face, a starter actually. First time. We've called his name today, so he feels like a fresh face. Pecos wanted it. Out to Richardson, corner three, no good. Rebound all the way to Fields. What a beautiful to lead time to pass and lay up. It's within 16 now. Hensel South really closing in with this ball press that they're pulling out. Something the Dukes haven't been able to handle so far. Comments rolling in. Josh Melvin, your apology has been accepted. Indiana University soccer commit Charlie Hoyer has reached out and said, apology accepted. Thank you, Chuck. Glad you're a big supporter. Anyways, Pecos with it. Looking to pass. Pexulis knocking it out of bounds. 3.49 here remaining in the game. Chances look lower for Hinsdale South right now, but they've really been starting to put a comeback on here with their ball press defense, and something we've been talking about all night is the Dukes having turnovers. One right there by Danko, and Fields with it. Up to Wegus. Wegus lays it in. Timeout, Hinsdale South cutting the lead to 14. Connor Troy, what have you seen Hins What adjustments has Hinsdale South's head coach make to really make this comeback more possible? They started to lock it down on defense much better. I mean, they're, they've gotten a lot of stops from the Dukes, and on uh, in terms of offense, they have Who? when they've gotten the breakaways, oh, yeah. okay. they have been able to run down as well as put up the shots that they had been missing earlier in the first half when it came to these full court passes. As for the Dukes, they've gotten a little bit lazy on defense, so you obviously hope they can shore that up there as we head to 3 minutes and 38 seconds in the fourth quarter. You're watching York Varsity Boys Basketball here live on York Sports Network. And welcome back. Hinsdale South putting on the charge, but it might be too little too late. Only three minutes and 38 seconds remaining. Ravine with it. Looking to not turn the ball over as it's been four out of their last five possessions with the turnover. Over to Richardson. Nice skying pass over to Levine. Was able to corral it. Nice dribbling moves. Kick ball violation. Gonna be on. Hinsdale South, it looks like. The World Cup and all, maybe tried doing his best. Killian Mbappe impersonation did not work, unfortunately, playing basketball, so that's, that's going to be a turnover, and the Dukes are going to get the ball back. Great point. Scoop by Chris Danko over to Richardson. Looking for those passes. A much more active Hinsdale South defense here with their game on the line. Not a lot of fouls tonight. 
Only seven so far. My apologies. Nine, and that's the tenth, and that's going to be on number 13 of Hinsdale South. That's Elijah Fields. That's going to put the Dukes in the bonus. With every foul that this Hinsdale South team has given up, their chances of picking up their first road win look slimmer and slimmer. 0-3 on the road. Was hoping to change that coming into Elmhurst, but... Another turnover, this time by Adam Harda. Corner three by Fields, no good. Rebound Richardson, loses his handle. Back to Fields, a little up and under, no good. Nice little air jelly, but unable to finish it. Ferrario with it, fading, no good. Foul on Richardson, his second. And you could totally see Aiden Ferrari his arm got hit, and you could totally see it move down at contact, so he'll get some free throws here. If he gets lucky, he'll be able to cut the point deficit to 12. Hits the first free throw. That'll bring him up to five points. Bringing the lead down to 12, as you said. Coach Dunn is incensed as this lead was over double at max. I want to say it was 26. Foul there on Rudolph. So the Dukes have really, don't want to say choked away because they still haven't lost and they're still in a good position to win. However, this fourth quarter has not been looking good as they've only made, thanks to stats guy Nick, three points this quarter. South has slowly but surely been eaten away at the lead, but that bucket from Braden Richardson will definitely help the Dukes there. The big fellow making his case one point behind A.J. Levine for Rudolph with his fourth foul, so he's in foul trouble now. And forced turnover maybe? No, jump ball. That's in the possession area of the Dukes now. And... Gonna be Duke's ball here. Thank you, Ryan Pecos, for that one. He fought for the ball hard and was able to win the possession of it. Duke's definitely probably looking to slow the offense down here just a little bit. Ooh. Bit of a long pass there, nearly nailing the ref in the head. AJ Typically, you want to pass to your teammates, not the ref. He was head hunting there, folks. <laughs> just a little high there. No sweat. Levine Wiegas with it. Nice corner pass to Fields. Takes his time, but no good. Foul on Ferreria. Over the back on Pecos. Me Duke's ball at the baseline. Duke's looking to seal this one away. Up 14, reaching 500. For I want to say the first time this year. First or second time. Actually for the third time, they will be at 500, but definitely a team that's looking better and better and something that Coach Dunn really, a nice block oh. there by Danko with some force, effort, and passion. Spikes that ball into the Duke's logo off of Fields' arms. Here comes the bench for the Dukes. Up 16. Coming on is going to be Hall of Fame engineer Max Burnison, 6'3 wings, junior, as well as a junior. Wiggis with the three. Good. Going to put him up to 40 points here. A number that looked unimaginable after they put up 12 in the first half. Over to Van Daff, does not see Zucchio. For Wiegas with another three, no good. Rebound fighting for it. Peniotis Malamis not able to corral it. Also on the floor for the Dukes is Nick Dezano, along with Tommy Van Daff. And finally, number 24, Chris Pomato. We will be right back as the Dukes look to really put this one away, take the win at home, go to five and five on the season for their next big game 
at Lyons Township on Friday, I would like to say. Welcome back. Just confirmed the schedule of the Dukes. Friday at Lions Township. Big rivalry game against a great Lions Township. Wiggis with the three. No good. Rebound Pomato. Fighting for it. Gets it out. Up to Burnison. Stops over to Dizano. The Dukes are just going to try and dribble this one out. Hensel South going to try and make that as difficult as possible. Off Matthew Rudolph, Peniotti Malamas with the throw in there. But as I was saying, and then they go meet a 5-2 and two Lake Zurich team up there in Lake Zurich. So a couple of tough games before the Tosh, but the Dukes have been constantly improving. Three ball, Van Daff, no good. Back out to Van Daff. Over to Peniotti. And foul by Elijah Fields. 31.1 remaining in the game. 16, 13 point lead. But if you want to check out the Dukes and how they do, go visit them. Lions Township is out in LaGrange, and obviously Lake Zurich is up in Lake Zurich. Go support the Dukes. Malamis with the free throw. No dribbles, no warm up for him. Catch and shoot, and good for both. 29 seconds remaining. Giannis could learn a thing or two from this guy. <laughs> Catch and shoot free throw, both are good. Nothing good but that. Good three there. Peck Zulis with it. Up to Burnison. Pomato with it, driving. Back up to Van Daff. And the Dukes will finally be left to rest for the win. And they take their second straight home win, and their second straight win overall, their first back-to-back -back wins of the season. Gaining momentum as the season goes along. Connor Choi, what did you think of the Dukes this game, and how can they get better, and how have they been getting better? Uh, this is probably the best basketball game I've seen by the York boys. Uh, they had a complete game. I was very impressed with the first three quarters, especially. They would move the ball around with per almost nearly perfect precision. They had a lot of great moments and taking great shots. They did almost everything Coach Dunn could have asked them to do, maybe except for the turnovers, which were really only relevant in the fourth quarter. As for Hinsdale South, they were able to mount a bit of a comeback at the end, but the first three quarters of sloppy play were just too deep of a hole to come out of. And if the Dukes play like they did in the first three quarters, I think LT and Lake Zurich could have a very tough time managing this team. AJ Levine and Braden Richardson with two of their best games so far this season. And really a complete team effort and one of the best I've seen so far. And with that, we thank you all for watching. And in the wise words of Gavin Connolly, go Dukes.